Good afternoon, everyone. Again, so welcome to part two on how do I turn my CSV into a heat map and how many clusters should I use. So in this case, uh, what the end goal that we're gonna looking at is something that looks like this. Remember that from the last video, we have five sample A, B, C, D, E, and we have about five thousand six hundred gene. So the heat map will roughly look like this, and you can see we have some sub cluster beside it to actually try to differentiate the different cluster that we have. Of course, the data is totally random. It should not look like that. And yeah, this is not a very good data set. And if you, your data set look like this, you might need to redo your experiment or consider some other method of data analysis and such somewhat. But in this case, uh, in the second video, I'm just going to show you how to actually determine how many um, cluster do you need. In this case, we have settled with six. Okay, so how do you get the kind of six cluster? So there are two different methods that I'm gonna use here. Uh, they're actually both uh, a k-means clustering method. They're not a hierarchical clustering because in hierarchical clustering, you can see there's unlimited amount of cluster you can try to differentiate. So k-means will give kind of a rough estimation of how many cluster is most suitable for the data set data set you have. And k means cluster is not very popular among uh, bioinformatics. I see them using a lot in let's say machine learning and stuff. So I actually got this method from Psychic Learn and all that thing. So the first method I'm gonna use is called an elbow method. No, not this one, sorry. So the elbow method would actually see where does the elbow reside. So I'm gonna show you more of the online example. If you actually just search elbow method k-means on Google, you actually see a lot of plot like this. So these are mostly for machine learning and stuff. You can see there's always an elbow. So this is one of the most obvious one where the elbow, where the gradient changes significantly after that point. So we can see this as well. There's an elbow here. We go down, you can see there's an elbow over here. Here, it's not that clear, but it's somewhere in between here. And you can see here, you see, can you see there's an elbow on the third cluster of K-means? So elbow method is not the only method you have. The other one is called a shoelet method. So a shoelet method is, look somewhat like this. Actually, I don't know how to spell shibboleth even though I am actually very fluent in English. <laughs> so I actually have no idea how to spell that word, so I just Google it up all the time. So shibboleth method is slightly different from the elbow method. So this it turns the data the other way around. So the, the good thing about this is that it will actually just show label it on the graph directly on how many cluster you should have. So let's just see, there's more example. And there is, a, yeah, there's another example here. So the optimum cluster would be about here. So this is, let's see if we can find another one, but usually they will just label directly on the graph. Let's see. So if you have this amount of cluster here and there and stuff, this is the elbow method again. And yeah, we don't have. So the last one is actually the, the principle that that behind um, this elbow method, which is also called a sum of square distance method. and the Chevrolet method. So that's actually what is k-mean clustering. So unlike hierarchical clustering where we are looking at different relationship between one sample to another, k-mean clustering is trying to aggregate different sample into one group or another. So this is used a lot in unsupervised machine learning. And something just went wrong with my display. Let's just refresh this page. Okay, maybe I'm using, I'm not supposed to do this on the internet because it's copyright infringing. Okay, so in this case, a k-mean clustering just try to group things into different groups. So it might look like this, it might look like this. So what they do is that they try to cluster things based on a central point in different location and they try to actually change the data. There's a really great video on crash course on this one. I strongly suggest everyone to go and look at it if you actually want to understand what is the k-mean clustering is about. But I'm just going to use it as a logic and use it as a, what do I call, excuses or suggestion on how many clusters do we need for our data point because and in the end I'm just gonna use hierarchical clustering because I am able to fish out which transcript do I need. Okay, so the 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 code here is fairly simple compared to what we have just now. So the first one is this uh, elbow method. It's also called WSS here. I'm not sure why I haven't read the thing. So if you know just comment down below and make sure you tell everyone about it. So 
As you know, I'm recording on the same day right after my first video. So you can actually see all my code are still here, which is what will you do what you should have after your after you finish the first video on how to make my CSV into a heatmap tutorial. Okay, so in this case I'm just gonna run the first one. So very easy, highlight the thing, press run, and this is gonna take a while if I'm not wrong. Sorry, I have not highlighted the text. Let's just run this. So this is gonna take a while because I actually would need a lot of calculation in behind this. So let's check our task manager. So I have a 3570 here. I have a 3570 CPU which is kind of old and it's still and the worst thing about R is that I hope that we improve is actually try to get multi-threading to work on this thing because most of the thing over here only run on single track and it's kind of suffering when you have four but, it, but this thing only use one. Okay that's done. So when you're done you can actually see there's a the plot directly would appear in the low lower right corner which we have never used before okay so this place is so big for a reason because all the plot that you do will be right over here okay so you can see this is our elbow method remember from the graph here just now so this is obviously the elbow so the optimum cluster from our first elbow method to, is determined to be around six okay so you can see there's a total within the sum of square and all that thing so if you want to know about the mathematics behind all this i'll link you to the official website and you can actually have a look, have a look at it okay so once we're determined from the elbow method let's go for the sure lab method so in this case, this is slightly faster and yeah, so in this case, great. So both our our cleaning clustering method actually tell us that we need uh, six cluster in our data set, which is in coordinates to the one that I did before. And of course, uh, we actually prepare every data before we start running the test and record the video. Okay, so once we are done, so in the... Then the, the last one, we're actually trying to do a final k-mean clustering. So in this case, y is the data set that we have assigned earlier. Okay, so 6 is the cluster that we determine to be the best. And n star is actually how many uh, initiation points you want to start that. So you can also study that in the documentation in the R and the R package and all that thing. So in this case, this actually R25 uh, is the default value, so I'm not going to change that because I'm actually not going to use this graph anyway, but just to let you know that how you can actually generate that. So the clustering is really fast, it takes like a second, and this one FVIZ cluster to just plot the clustering result here. So you can see the different color actually represent different um, clusters. Different color represent different cluster in this. So we have six different cluster mapped nicely on the cluster plot over here. And now we have known that there's six cluster, we can proceed to the heat map and the actual part of hierarchical clustering and heat map generation. So I'm gonna end the second video right here. So just a short summary. We have actually talked through what is the elbow method. So the elbow method k means. So elbow method determines how many best cluster there is based on the sum of square distance, and we look at the elbow. So a sudden change of the gradient of the graph when you are plotting it, and we we'll look at output and all that thing. So yep. So you can see there's a good good button. So there's a good emoji. So the second one is actually called the Schulet method on Schulet method, where it would actually directly just tell you on the spot, tell you directly on the plot where is the optimum number of cluster so you don't have to worry about all that thing. So the third one is that we try to actually cluster our data set into six different cluster using this k-means function and we try to plot the data out using this f this cluster functions okay. So label size is one so the text is very small because you can and I strongly recommend everyone try to change the limit on the parameter and see what you can get because you can get amazing things out there are if you want to so i'm gonna end the second video right here thank you for watching breakfast for living